So this is my Bridgeport vertical mill. Another one of my machines I, I picked up for a bargain here. It's, a, it's in good shape. It's got chrome ways. It, it does have a only a one horsepower motor on it and you have to change the spindle speed to a belt. But it's it's pretty good for what I use it for. It's got a slaughter head you can kind of see in the background here. Slider head. I've got to make some tooling for it. Should be good for putting keyways in small gears and pulleys and stuff like that. But the issue we have is with this new wall sapphire digital readout. Now when it sits when it sits for a time, the, the x-axis starts counting up on its own. I mean jumping by like a quarter of an inch or a half an inch at a time or more. Uh, check the grounds on it, cleaned them up, didn't seem to make a difference. Swap the, swap the encoders off the, the slides. Uh, the issue stays on the x-axis so I know it's in the, in the readout itself. The, uh, the intensity of the readout kind of varies up and down some so, so there's got to be an internal issue there. Uh, Problem is, is I, I know the scales on this machine work. Uh, to get a replacement readout of for this would probably be about twelve hundred dollars at least from New Wall. So that's that's more that's more than I've got in the mill. So I will look at seeing what what it takes to fix this. So here's the story so far. I opened it up and. Figured out there might be a might be a power supply issue with it, so I found these three regulators here. There's a 12 volt and a couple of 5 volt regulators, and the power coming out of them really was was quite dirty. Um, Start looking at them, and the only thing between the power supplies and the incoming transformer are these filter capacitors, and there's two sets of diodes: one set of four down here, and one set of four up here, set up as rectifiers. So there's something either wrong with these filter capacitors or these diodes. I'm well, seeing that the unit was built in 96 according to the inspection tag, so it's about 25 years old. These electrolytic capacitors could be, could be the culprit. So let's, I'll start to chart the change of those and, and we'll see what happens. I ordered some replacements off online from DigiKey. In a couple of different sizes. DigiKey is nice because you can go on there and you can search not only by value but also physical side size and, and lead spacing of the components. So you make sure you got an exact fit. So we'll change those out and see what happens. Okay so we've got the power supply filter capacitors replaced here. Placed, placed all these capacitors with some like value capacitors. Uh, hopefully everything is in frame here. Got the, uh, the hand tech oscilloscope all fired up. Uh, we got a little bit of a short power supply leads coming out of the, the box here but hopefully we can keep everything in frame and see what we're doing. So first let's let's check the let's check the output Check the output side from the bridge rectifier. Give some power here. Well, that's a pretty straight flat line. It says we're 20 volts, 20.4 volts. That's a lot flatter than it was before. There was a lot of a lot of dips in there, and so so maybe these filter capacitors taking care of it. What will tell us for sure is we'll, we'll check the output of this uh, 5 volt regulator up top which was the worst one. Of course I just turned the power off before we move this over in case it's short, short anything out. Okay let's turn it back on. Got a pretty flat line. 5.6 volts is what this is reading. I don't know if that's in spec, 
but it's a lot flatter, a lot cleaner, cleaner signal. I wish I would have recorded it before the change, but there was a lot of uh, a lot of noise, a lot of ripples in that signal. It's almost going all the way down to zero volts. So I thought, it appears that these capacitors might have done the trick. So let's let's check let's check our display here. It's hard to see down here, but of course there's no there's no scales plugged in, so there's got signal fail on it. But they're nice and solid. Not they're not pulsating like they like they were. At least at least not here. I don't know what the what the camera's picking up. Uh, the next next step is probably uh, go get all the screws, put this back together, go back out in the the cold shop outside and. Plug it back in and see what we got. So let's start with some reassembly. Okay, we're all back together. Let's uh, make sure it still still fires up here. This look this looks awkward. It is. I'm trying to trying to stay out of the camera. Looks pretty good. Shield the light there. See, it's not. This would pulsate and flicker before. It's it's real solid now. I think it's good. Let's go try it on the mill. Okay, we'll see how this works. Normally I got you on a mic plugged into my phone here, but kind of hard to do when I'm working over there on the machine, so we'll see how the audio comes out. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, there's x-axis. As I said before, the x-axis would always climb randomly just sitting there. You can see the, uh, the displays are nice and solid. It's not pulsating, flickering like it was before. That last digit too would always 
flicker around every now and then. It's a half thou accuracy and a flicker between zero and five. Got a y axis. Lighting in here isn't too great. Hopefully, you can see that. But all in all, it looks like that took care of it. So, bad filter capacitors. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, somebody found this entertaining or useful, and we'll see you around.